this ends our program for today. Our esteemed panel has been here uh, illuminating us with their perspectives, their presentations. You've seen a video, you've heard uh, people from on the ground in South Korea. And so I'm gonna offer the panel one last opportunity for commentary. Uh, Dr. Ko. I'm really privileged and honored to have this opportunity to express my evaluation and perspective on the presentations done today. All the presentations are extremely well done in good standing. So I want to congratulate those, ha those who have given these good presentations today. And my job is to summarize and wrap it up nicely so that everybody leave this room happily understanding what we have done today. I'm not gonna repeat what's been said. I will simply inject my perspective on those presentations given today. There are many issues that have been addressed. Unification, North Korea problem, Park jong is uh, impeachment, and all those things are very important issues. But we have to get into the core, the fundamental reasons why these things happen. Without understanding the core of these reasons, we would not be able to analyze and understand what is happen, what's going to happen in the future. Okay. So my evaluation of this presentation is done topically. First of all, North Korea issue. North Korea issue is very critical today. As we have witnessed that the North Korea now is about to develop ICBM. The United States leadership has expressed major concern with the ICBM. North Korea is uh, trying to get ICBM is not to use it on the United States. They know it's a suicide. The major reason why ICBM trying to get North Korea's political reasons is a shortcut. North Korea, if North Korea has ICBM, the first thing they're going to do is blackmail the United States. They're going to force the United States, are you going to leave from South Korea or are you going to get hit with the ICBM? Of course, the United States will not leave South Korea abandoned. But anyway, that's tactic, one of the tactics of North Korea, more than anything else. Would North Korea is going to uh, be crushed? We have seen North Korea has had a lot of problems, flood the problems, salvation, everything else. So what's going to happen in North Korea? What happened is North Korea is solid as rock, as steel. The major reason is, is a politically indoctrination, atomization, regimentation, collectivization. Indoctrination, all these things we, we would make North Korean citizens powerless, completely powerless. That's the reason why you never heard North Koreans has had any protest movement. South Korea, you know, politics based on protest. But North Korea has not had any protest so far. The major reason is it's based on this collectivization, indoctrination, atomization. So all the power belong to one organization, the Standing Committee of Politburo of Korea Works Party, all of 100% belong to. And Kim Jong-un represent that. So basically, North Korea is not going to fall that easily because of this factors I've just mentioned. But North Korea also has some problem with that. Steals not be collapsed, but can break. What happened is the major defect of North Korean leadership is that this hardcore within Politburo, that is a key we have to address to. That's the target we have to think about what to do because the Korean, North Korean people doesn't have the power whatsoever. But standing committee has the power. So if within the standing committee, 
there is friction, confrontation, that is the point to where the North Korea will break it out. And that's the reason why Kim Jong-un has to, he has to get rid of Chang sok tae and his uh, half-brother Kim Jong-nam. Because these are a threat to him. They, he, if, if this guy, this, uh, his re close relatives are alive, it's not that they are that much threat to, directly to him, but his subordinates within Politburo might eliminate Kim Jong-un and then bring these guys in. That was the possibility. Therefore, Kim Jong-un got to get rid of Chang sok tae and uh, Kim Jong-un. That's the main reason why. They are not threat at all. So if we don't understand the fundamental conceptual framework of North Korea's political leadership, we, would not have, we are not going to solve any problem. It's just the dialogue, narrative, narration is only. At the same time, what about uh, Park Jong-hee and uh, Park Jong-hee's daughter, Park Geun Hye's issue? Again, that really relates to the status of South Korea's democratic system. The South Korea's democratic system is in great danger, in crisis. Outsiders within the country, they regard the South Korean democratic system as real democracy. That's what Kim Dae-jung said. That's what the, you know, Noh Myeon said, direct democracy. That is real danger because such a system can be mobocracy, mob rule. That's what happened. Mob rule. That's what the Plato was, Socrates was, you know, they were most concerned with, with democracy. So when the mobs take over the power, South Korea's fate is in tremendous crisis. It can change any time, just as much as Park Geun-hye was removed from the office. So without understanding the nature of South Korea's democratic system, we are not going to have answer to that. Okay. Yeah. We're not going to have an answer. Okay. So basically, these issues are critical issues. It's not going to be solved by simply dialogue conversation, it has to be deeply, precisely researched by political scientists like me. So this problem's got to leave to me, to me, first, and consult with me, okay? And I want to thank you very much for your listening. Thank you. Uh, if I may. You're on. You're on. Uh, I walk away from this with three things. Number one, it's key to understand that the experiment of democracy, both in the United States and Korea, is very young. And that processes and the law matter. If you do not conform to your constitution and you do not conform to your laws, they become meaningless. And that's how rule of mob occurs. The other thing, too, is you'll often hear an argument that Jefferson wrote that an independent and strong press is essential to democracy. And that is a true statement. He did say that. But no one goes into what he said two paragraphs later, where he said, there is no strength in an organization without character, principles, and integrity. You combine the two, and you wind up with an honest media is essential to democracy. Fake media is a global phenomenon. It's not just limited to the US and Korea. But if it's allowed to go unchecked, it takes you in a direction that ultimately you wish you had not gone. And so I close with, there were three elements of value that I learned from this. Number one, I did not know the Korean constitution, its laws, or its principles before today, and did not have the vision or foresight to realize it could might impact me but it does. Every democracy's approach to sustaining itself is critical to America because we are allied in the defense of democracy. It is the very foundation of our society and culture. Second and final, I guess third and final, the North Korean threat is real. We've not yet addressed how to deal with it. 
It's a complicated issue, but a time is running out. We've been kicking the can down the road for 20 years, if you will, if I'm going to use an English euphemism. And now we're approaching a time where hard decisions have to be made, and we have to walk them carefully from a position of knowledge. That's my takeaway, and I put it out as a thought. Thank you. I spent half of my time in my entire life in the United States as well as in Korea and been traveling many places to learn and grow myself. And um, at one point, I saw my mother country, Korea, in a very deep crisis. And I said, this is wrong, simply wrong. And um, people did not stand up and uh, fight against the injustices. And I said, that's also wrong. Because if you let the uh, mob justice take place in any part of the world, whether it's Korea, US, or any part, they'll just uh, proliferate. They'll get bigger, 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 like a virus. So I said, we should stop it, because it's simply wrong. We cannot let our next generation, my sons and daughters, my grandson and my granddaughters, live in the uh, uh, society and world that these uh, injustices may take place. How do we do it? Let's speak up. Let's tell each other there is something wrong going on in certain part of the world. It may affect one another. And only by telling our friends that something's wrong, we can protect each other. So we intend to uh, do this more. Uh, this Honolulu seminar is first of our effort. And we hopefully go to a mainland United States, uh, hopefully maybe uh, Washington, D.C., or the other part of the uh, uh, country and other part of the world as well, to let everyone know justice must be served. How do we do it? Like I said, like we said, through military means, economic means, political means, and friendship uh, mechanisms, we go together. Kachigapsta. Thank you. I express my sincere uh, appreciation to the audiences who have gathered to learn and share the issues on Korea, uh, representing the Korea as one of the Korean uh, citizens. I really thank you very much. Uh, it is evident that there is a, a great danger coming around to us with the uh, illegal impeachment or discharge of Park Geun Hye and the emergency of uh, illegal government of Moon Jae in. 그러나, 우리 한국과 미국은 건국 과정에서부터 유교 전쟁 그리고 그 위에 많은 도전으로부터 공동의 가치를 지금까지 잘 지켜왔습니다. Both United States and Republic of Korea, Iraq, have served and protected and maintained our mutual value from the founding of our nations through the uh, harsh Korean War and many challenges we have uh, encountered we have withstood our challenges together. 또 앞으로 우리가 함께 극복해야 합니다. And those challenges will also be overcome in the in the upcoming years together. 이를 위해서 동맹국인 우리 미국에서는 어떻게 해서든지 한미 동맹 주한미군 한미 연합사 체제를 확고히 유지해서. 절대로 대한민국을 포기하지 않겠다는 각오를 좀 해주시기를 당부드립니다. To make it possible, I urge you strongly that the United States, through the joint forces between U.S. forces as well as the Korean Army, we urge the United States not to give up the hope and the effort to protect the ally, South Korea. 또한 북한 김정은 체제를 
압박을 해서 그 체제를 붕괴시키거나 항복해서 개, 개방의 길로 나올 수 있는 그런 강력한 대북 정책도 추진해 주시기를 당부드립니다. I also urge that United States pressure North Korea and possibly bring down Kim Jong Un regime and open the North Korean system to the world of free market economy and the free world and US continues to impose the policy to make that happen. 절대로 김정은과 타협을 해서는 안 된다는 것을 다시 한번 말씀드립니다. I once again strongly uh, stress that the United States should never should not compromise with Kim Jong Un dictatorship. 김정은은 그 체제가 붕괴되기 전까지는 절대로 핵과 장거리 미사일을 포기하지 않기 때문입니다. Kim Jong Un knowing what's, what's happening around him will never will never give up his nuclear capability as well as ICBM capabilities to protect his own regime. 우리 자유 대한민국으로 통일될 때 비로소 핵과 장거리 미사일이 해결된다는 것을 확실히 말씀드립니다. I can assure you that only through the reunification led by free world South Korea, this nuclear threat as well as ICBM threat can be neutralized and resolved for good. 우리도 우리 대한민국 애국 국민들도 가만 있지 않을 것입니다. The patriot citizens in Korea will not hold still. 정권은 비록 빼앗겼지만 문재인이 독주를 반드시 막아내는 투쟁을 할 것입니다. Though we seemingly have lost the regime to illegal group of people, we will fight back. 지금도 we gain our sovereignty back to people. 지금도 하고 있습니다. And we are already on our way. 사드 기지에서 반대 세력이 물러나라고 데모하지만 태극기를 든 국민들도 그 앞에 가서 반대 투쟁을 하고 있습니다. In certain part of Korea, United States uh, forces have deployed a THAAD uh, arsenal to protect the threat from uh, North Korea and there is an opposition party who is saying uh, THAAD go away. At the same time, the Korean patriotic citizens also gathered to have a protest to protect U.S. interest and U.S. defense system. 뿐만 아니라 앞으로 이후에 우리 내부에서 전개되는 어떠한 반미 투쟁 현장에 우리 태극기 국민들이 반드시 함께 싸울 것입니다. In any form of anti-U.S. protest led by those leftist uh, group of people, our right-wing uh, Taeguk-gi patriot citizens will stand firmly to fight back and fight against those betrayers. 애국 세력을 결집을 해서 다시 올바른 정권을 되찾아오는 투쟁도 하겠습니다. I promise you we will gather those patriot, patriotic citizens and gather their strengths and enlarge their strengths to fight back our country's sovereignty. 다시 한번 존경하는 동맹국 미국 국민 여러분과 우리 이영 말리에 와서 어, 훌륭하게 살고 계시는 동포 여러분께 감사드립니다. 감사합니다. Once again, I send my highest respect to our great ally, the United States, and I send my heartwarming greeting to the Korean Americans who are living in the States far away from the mother country. And I thank you all for your presence today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, close today. I really appreciate your presence. We are limited on time. The facility is not ours for the entire afternoon. However, I do have, we have one more person who's going to just say goodbye to you, and that's our Director of Asia Pacific Affairs uh, from Soft Power Solutions, Shirley Nostroff. Just did want to say, Kamsamida. Thank you very much for coming. There was a lot of, there were a lot of very important conversations that we hope will carry on to the next series, to the next uh, dialogue in the series. 
You'll be getting emails and updates of where we are. We plan to do this in, in other major cities around the country. Um, and uh, hopefully you can make it to one of them. But please, it's very important that we hear from you. Please fill out your critique forms. Tell us what we did right and tell us what you would like to see us do better. So on behalf of Soft Power Solutions, I thank you all for coming and enjoy your evening. Aloha.